sort. Hello everyone. Today um, it's day three of the TMBI training or introduction to the reports. Let's call it like that because uh, it's uh, th these these three days are intended to just show to you what's available as at today because uh, for sure more reports will be uh, will be uh, generated in the future. So uh, today is the last day, and I am joined again. I have the pleasure to have on board uh, Sol Evangelio on the, on my side. So good morning to you. Hey, good morning, every good morning, every, oh, Danny. Sorry, <laughs> good morning, everybody. Don't worry, it happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you guys? Nice to have you here. One more day, just to just to remind you that you have available the Q and A chat, just in case you have any question, any concern that you would like to share. Or just uh, talking, but better just to to write everything in the Q and A chat. I will take care of it. And remember that we will compile these uh, issues or these uh, questions for all of you to have them. We will send everything to you at the at the end of the of this session. So over to you, Danny. Thank you, Sol. So uh, without further ado, we will. Um, uh, I think we will just do a bit of recap of what we saw yesterday. Um, you have in on your screen the the live uh, uh, feed of the Moja uh, documents lands page when the transportation management folder is located, and you'll see there five. Uh, you don't. Yes. Oh, okay. Sorry. So you see there five uh, reports. The last one. This one I am highlighting right now, TM.EM monitoring report. It's not uh, in the scope of this report and still is not, uh, as you can see, it's not uh, certified. So this report is not certified, so it's not, um, it's not meant to be used for the moment. Okay, I think, uh, correct me Juan, if I'm wrong, this TM report, it's coming from the past when uh, at some point uh, there was some design created for some particular UN entities, but that's not the case for, for right now. So I, I guess that uh, eventually it will be either deleted or modified uh, before uh, certified. So uh, for the moment that last report is not in the scope of the, of the training. So, um, what we saw yesterday was the delivery requirements and forwarding orders and the event details. Um, the delivery requirements and the FOS, uh, remember that uh, this report will give us uh, kind of like uh, the linkages between the all the DTR documents in terms of transportation. You see that all, almost 100% of all these lines in the prompt are master data elements related to the DTR or slash uh, FWO in case that we're going to transport troops. But uh, for the moment, uh, the, most of the examples and the scenarios that we are using it's uh, from the DTR perspective. So uh, uh, we have plenty of master data elements in the prompt related to the DTR, right? So uh, the analysis, the initial analysis that we are, uh, that we can do from the beginning, it's at the DTR uh, level, right? Uh, then, once we click in OK in the prompt, uh, in case that we do not filter any of the, these fields, then we will see measures related to the FOS, to the uh, forwarding orders, right? So uh, it's, uh, it pivots in the prompt from the DTR perspective and gives you an analysis from the DTR slash FO perspective once you have the report and the data available in the in in your screen. So that's uh, uh, for the moment the prompt. And let me try to launch another one, the second of we saw, which is the event details as well. So we can just talk uh, five minutes in parallel about uh, both of them. All this is for the events. Remember that, uh, uh, on the contrary, the prompt for the events details have plenty of elements in the prompt related to the FO, and uh, a couple of them related to the document type and the transportation mode from the DTR level, right? And uh, important to highlight the event type, it's a compuls comp compulsory or mandatory field that 
it's defaulted to all, but if you click in the match code, you'll see uh, that uh, the system gives you two other options, which are respected and not reported events. And the reported events, uh, regardless whether those events are expected or unexpected. Okay, so I'm going to launch it again. That's the event, so we can run in parallel. I'm going back to the delivery requirements and forwarding orders. So you see um, that uh, initially we have our consignee, the description of the consignee, and the number of the DTR, number of documents, right? If I go to the measures, there we go. So you see that it's pretty much the delivery requirements and forwarding order orders gives us a, a you know, holistic perspective and, and pretty good perspective of the whole uh, um, scenario related to the DTR level from the attribute side to the measures side, right? So uh, we saw yesterday how we can could work with this report. Um, so it was not uh, really uh, very complicated, right? Uh, because uh, it's focused on the DTR perspective of the, on, of the first document on the requirement that is created before we launch the transportation uh, or the transport of our goods or the troops. And then in terms of event details, this is a very specific report related to the events created while the, the transportation uh, model is going especially to the FO the freight order phase. And there, yes, in this particular analysis workspace, we have plenty of uh, forwarding order master data elements related to the consignee, the shipper, the execution status, um, and just uh, a couple of them related to the few. Uh, mostly the, the first or last document in case that, uh, uh, well, it differs, the, the few, usually it's one single document that it's linked to one to one to the DTR, so uh, so that that basically basically might be changed in the future, uh, um, as we discussed yesterday, because the first and last document may be uh, it's the same. Um, so you have uh, these two attributes related to the few. The rest are uh, basically FOs, um, a, bit, a bit of the event codes, uh, remember the sequence number that we saw yesterday, that's quite important. Let me just drag in and filter. Because the sequence number will give uh, us information of the expected events um, and uh, a little bit of the unexpected events as well. Remember that uh, if I double click, I see here a code starting with 85, and once we reach, I think, 1,000, from 1,000 onwards, those will be unexpected events related to the delays or, or uh, losses, uh, if we lost uh, any part of the, of the cargo or there is some sort of damage, then those events will be somehow registered with those codes. That's, uh, we did a uh, small demo on, on that yesterday as well. So uh, that's a bit of a recap of what we saw yesterday um, and today's session. And please uh, uh, use the Q&A uh, um, icon in case that you have uh, any question or comment because uh, so it's monitoring that. So today uh, we are going to see the last uh, report, which is the freight order and events. And uh, just a little bit of, of the, on Power BI, um, the, let's say, visualization of, of uh, all the dashboard created by RDM. This, uh, this uh, dashboard in, in Power BI is just intended to, to show to you how you can basically um, merge all this uh, data from transportation and event management into one single uh, screen. And from there, you can drill down using a lot of visualizations, donut charts, pie charts, and bar charts in order to go to the specifics of, of each type of uh, DTR or transportation mode. So it's uh, it's just a suggestion for you that you can freely use for, of course, but uh, it's just, let's say, an entry point uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, data visualization in Power BI. 
that is not meant to be like a written on stone and fixed, uh, but it's just a, a suggestion of how you can monitor your transportation and events in the system. So, uh, but that will be at the last part of the of today's session. So we will go through the freight order and events first, which is the last uh, analysis workspace. This one, this report will facilitate exploration and statistics related to the execution events and freight order level. So for each of the FOs, we'll have a, a list of events, and then we will be able to analyze. Uh, based on the situation, objective of the of the report will be to support business with uh, uh, you know, an analysis of the performance of each leg of the shipments, uh, providing lead, providing lead times, number number and percentage of events happening from a wide variety of perspectives. And you'll see that uh, initially we can do a lot of uh, analysis. Uh, it related to the inco term that we have used, the consignee, the shipper, the carrier, the delays, the losses and damages for each of the, those events, number of number of events and type of events, specific FOs. So uh, a bit of a information of what's going on with the with each part of the legs in our transportation, those and the events and uh, the percentage of those events that are not uh, let's say reporting good news in the sense that uh, uh, we we are expecting delays or damages in, in our cargo or even losses. So um, that's uh, that's a little bit of uh, the, the framework or, or of the report, but then uh, as we always do, we, we show to you the prompt, the prompt uh, mostly devoted to the four master data elements as you can see and uh, to DTR uh, elements related to the transportation mode and document type, and uh, the uh, in the member selector always to select. We can always select all events or detected or reported events as we saw in the event details. So it's very similar to to the prompt uh, from freight order and events, but here the difference it's uh, quite huge in terms of measures, and you'll see. Because I'm, these are just screenshots of the number of measures that you can use in your analysis for these specific reports. And uh, if you count um, one by one, I think it's more than 100. Um, so uh, you have information there related to uh, even the customs and clearance events, um, arrival number of arrival to destination events. Um, related to the uh, loading, when begin, when ends, when starts, related to the proof of the delivery. And this is just a sample, okay? It's just I'm highlighting so in, with this square some of the things that may be of interest of you, for you. So uh, the latest on our loading, uh, when begins, when starts, uh, information on the, when the documentation is being complete, completed and sent, or being hand over, uh, handed over, uh, specifics on military and security scored in case that they're, they, the event is missing, uh, number of military security scores, uh, scores, latest date of military security scored missing, uh, number of freight orders with damages, uh, with major delays, uh, with, uh, with uh, other events like uh, damages or losses. So. There are plenty, plenty of, of measures in our, let's say, uh, at hand in order to be used and in order to cross-reference with the FO's attributes that we saw yes, earlier in the in the prompt. So it's quite uh, interesting in that in that regard. This is the AWS the report with the largest number of measures of the four that we saw. So the, once we do launch the report, it comes directly, it pivots through the, through the carrier description initially. And then you have, as you can see there, uh, 19 columns, but uh, uh, 19 columns are filtered, right? Because we have more than, we should have more than 100. If we select all the columns, we'll have uh, plenty of them, uh, plenty of measures. So the, the, this report, if you do not filter uh, or if you want to take an account all the different possibilities in terms of measures, this uh, report can be really difficult to manage. So that's why it's important that you take a close look at these uh, measures 
uh, and especially in the job aid, when we go there, you, you can see and the description of all these uh, elements. And based on that, you can highlight something that, you know, it's of interest for you. And then based on those analyses, initial analysis, then you can select those measures in the report. Because otherwise, it will be really difficult, I think, to uh, maneuver all these amounts and ever with, with all this amount of information in, in just one, one shot. So um, that's uh, the, in terms of the prompt and the report initially. Uh, I'm going, we're going to just take a, a quick look at the, at the job aid. As we always say, you know, the first time that you uh, take a look at the job aid, it's always you know, uh, good to, to have your report and you run in parallel both, uh, let's say, uh, elements, and then you can just read or look for a specific uh, element that you don't, or concept that you do not understand very well in the report. And uh, the job aid is really useful for you to get a bit of a bit of a light in that regard. Remember that the first uh, 10 pages are common in most of the job aids related to how you can use the prompt and how you can log in into the system, and then we go to the description of the measures. See, in general terms, what, what's a measure? And then from there, we have a list. In this case, we have a, plen uh, a list of, uh, of all the measures available. Some of them are, let's say, self, mm, let's say, um, explanatory, right? Like uh, you, for example, uh, number of calls, latest date, latest date of unloading and events. So, uh, but probably uh, in case that there's something that is not clear, we can actually, um, I think, uh, develop a little bit in terms of description, some of these concepts as well. But the ones that have uh, a little bit of more, uh, let's say, uh, or may need more, more description, you have there all the information in terms of number of major events, slight events, what's a slight event, what's a major delay, right? Major delay will be total, total count of events classified as a major delay, an event as a major delay, when the difference between the actual unexpected dates in the arrival to destination exceeds four weeks. So uh, in those cases, yes, the description is there. In some others, if there is no like clear definition in terms of like the business and, 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 and a protocol in terms of policy, then it's self-explanatory. Um, so you can see even you have some graphs in order to explain a little bit uh, uh, the part of the handover and uh, the tables with the codes and the description for the codes in case that you're no, you have no familiarity with, with them. So uh, that's in just in terms of measures. You see that uh, there are plenty of them. Okay, so then I think we jump into the uh, attributes, and those attributes have been as well uh, explained in the document. And at the end, uh, the scope determination will define a bit of the boundaries of the data that are uh, subject to be used in, in the report. In this case, uh, the report, the, the, the cube of data, it's all the freight orders execution events with no restrictions coming from the transactional system in, in transportation management. So uh, that's a, a bit of a uh, kind of like a summary of what you can find in the job aid. Uh, let me go back to the presentation. And then uh, the idea is to, to just go through a little bit on, on the report, on the demo. You know, uh, as you can see, uh, if I were you in like first day testing this, this report, I will definitely go to these measures and uh, first identify what it doesn't make sense or you do not, you don't understand in terms of like title of this measure, then you go back to the job aid and uh, uh, have clarity from there. Then select the ones that you think are important in, the, in order to track all the freight orders related to and, and the events uh, linked to the freight orders. You highlight or you just take them separately. And once you understand that, then you launch the prompt, you select those measures, and from there you do an analysis. Because otherwise, um, there are plenty of things that you can do. Uh, and uh, and if you don't know exactly where where you want to go, 
uh, you may get a bit of distracted with all these numbers and percentages that are coming right away. So um, that's uh, for the uh, on the presentation and the job eight. Um, then in terms of uh, of uh, the report, I think I launched it initially. Is this one? Ah, yeah, but uh, I was. Let me uh, open it again. So it's uh, documents. Uh, it was uh, freight order and events. This one. Initially, the required, as we saw yesterday, is the FO event type, defaulted in all. And uh, as we could see in the uh, presentation, most of these elements are, uh, the elements initially in the prompt are pivoting through the FO part with uh, two attributes, or excuse me, two, two uh, fields related to, F, uh, to the document type in terms of DTR or transportation mode. And we're clicking OK, and then uh, we see how the uh, the report looks. As uh, you saw previously, um, we only have 19 columns available. Remember that we have plenty of them, plenty of attributes. I'm, I'm scrolling down. You see on the left panel there are plenty of them. So uh, it's been filtered the measures because because you do see the this yellow funnel in the measures. Uh, icon over here. If I double click in measures, then you can see the amount of analysis that you can do. And the ones ticked are the one the ones coming or defaulted initially in the design of this report. But definitely you can change in case that uh, you want to do something else. Um, there you can find members. So in case that uh, you want to look for a specific uh, uh, concept within the measures, then you can use this uh, search engine. And uh, then it, you can even actually save a filter. So if you select, let's say, 10 of them, 10 different uh, measures in this part, you can save a filter. So every time that you launch the report, um, that filter will be taken on account, right? So. Uh, and that's actually recommended because uh, um, with these type of reports with so many measures, that's uh, that's something that we could uh, always use. So initially comes with 19 um, uh, measures. Uh, first one, FO number of documents. So we see the number of documents by each of these carriers used as a whole, right? There is no consignee uh, identified initially. And from there, we have different percentages on how uh, the situation is going in terms of uh, uh, unexpected events. For example, percentage of freight orders with damages, delays, losses of order events, uh, slight delay, number of freight orders with a slight delay. So it's a combination of account of FOs with uh, problems, let's say, uh, versus a percentage of those FOs with problems as well. So uh, by each of those carriers. And at the end, uh, we have a couple of, uh, of columns related to the DTRFO lead time and average lead time by each of the DTRs. Um, so that's what you can find initially. So let's go to the, to the uh, demo and uh, see a little bit. We can see what we can work, we're going to do in the next 10, 15 minutes. Basically, uh, we're going to analyze the FOs created in the last three months of 2019, right? So let's just start as we always do. You know, we, when we show these reports initially, we go and do a very uh, you know high-level analysis, and we don't just go into the specifics and big granularity. But we just go to the you know kind of like high-level uh, data, and then from there we drill down. So FOs created in the last three months. Obviously, the first uh, report that we see here. Uh, has nothing to do with that, so because we have our FO carrier description. So, as we did uh, do, I think yesterday or the day before, I'm going to use the auto update because I'm going to drag things out, drag drag some other attributes in. I'm going to filter the measures as well. So uh, I'm going to do everything that in let's say one shot, 
uh, and then I will click on Auto Update again, and then all those uh, updates will be refreshed in one single time. So, um, in terms of rows, uh, which is this attribute there for career description, I'm going to drag it in, uh, drag it out, and then uh, FO created since the last three months. So, I may want to go down a little bit and see whether you have an attribute related to uh, time. Right, and I just want to underline a fact here that every time you see an attribute with a small, I don't know if you can see that, or if you can notice there is a purple small icon just attached to the uh, right uh, down corner of this uh, attribute, which uh, has a small, let's say, clock. So every time in you see that icon in any of the attributes in any of the VR report, that means that a uh, those attributes are related to time, or hours, or quarters, or years, or months, or days. So, if for arrival date, I may expect that those are dates, single dates. So, let me just click there. You see that we have another two underneath, which is the FO created on, with a small clock, FO departure date, and nothing else. So let me just take a, uh, it was arrival date, no, it was created on, talking about the FOs created on a particular date. So you see that the report is not refreshing, so it's okay because I clicked, I more or less disconnected the connection between, uh, or the link between the report itself and the data cube. So FO created on, and uh, from there probably I will have to filter, right? the last three uh, months of 2019, but that will be later. And uh, it was FO number of documents. So I know that this measure, it's the one I want to use. So I'm going to have only that one selected. So in order to deselect the other 18, what I'm going to do is to select everything first and select everything. And then I select the one I want which is FO number of documents over here. You can always use in case that uh, uh, we can do later the, the, you can use this search engine as well. And I click in, okay. So I may expect if I click now in auto update, one single measure and one attribute. I may expect a list of dates here and a list of documents. So let's see if that is right or not. Exactly. So we have a list of dates for 2019 in this case, and uh, for each date we have a number of document, FO documents created. Um, how we can filter for the last three months of 2019? Well, in this case, uh, I think it would be wise to go directly to the list of dates that, fortunately for us, are uh, let's say in, uh, from the past to the latest date, so starting in 22nd of January 2019, all of them are ticked, so I'm going to unselect and only select the last three months. So I go, I'm going to go all the way to the button, and from there, the last one, the last uh, FO created was uh, the 12th, <laughs> like today, right? It's 12th, as well? Yes, it's today, and then I'm going to go directly to the first date I see in October, using my keyboard with the shift. So I'm selecting only those, right? So it's December, November, and October. Because then the 26th of September will not belong to the last three months of 2019. I click in OK. And then I will see only 32 rows. So 32 dates or days in the last three months have been, uh, let's see, uh, or we have created FOs in 32 different days of the last three months. Uh, so that's that's the situation in the last three months. If we want to um, put a, a total, we right click on the rows, or in this case the attribute created on totals, show totals, and there you see in the button that uh, 511 FOs have been created in the last uh, uh, three months of 2019. Okay. 
So and and you can see it it's uh, let's say defaulted from the first one, let's say in fourth of October, and to the last one, which is twelfth. As you can see that uh, in the sixth of uh, of uh, December, right, uh, you know, three days I guess after we went live, 122 FOs were created, and then from there you can see uh, that the number decreased a little bit, and then yesterday. Uh, <laughs> the system or we were able to create more, right, 49. So, uh, but before, previously, we had just a few, right? Um, so that's uh, the, the answer to the first question. Then we, uh, uh, how many FO documents we find? Okay, so it's uh, 511, right? Uh, which state has got the largest number of FO documents? Remember, uh, I'm using all these questions in order to uh, reuse some of these functionalities, but sometimes some of you maybe do not uh, uh, recall very well how to do certain things. So, which date? So, if, if I want to know which is the date that, uh, you know, uh, when we created the largest amount of FOs, although you can see one site, which is uh, click on I, which is the 6th of December, but you can always right click in the column, sort, and you can this descending and there you see if I scroll up you see that uh, it's the 6th of December 5th of December the, 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 the days where basically we started to you know, use the system a little bit more no, in terms of transportation management and all. so um, more things which to which consignia related or that is specific uh, uh, date so if I want to just analyze this date what I do is I can right click in the column and keep the member. Or can, I can always go to, the, I can double click on the FO created, select everything, and select everything, and only select that date. But I think it's easier to just right click, keep that member, and it's, uh, I think it's faster. So obviously, this result now is not uh, important anymore because we only have one record. So let me just remove totals, height totals, this is what we can see. So what, what shall we do in order to understand a little bit who, which is the consignee that created most of these uh, FO documents on that particular date? So I will have to go to the FO consignee attribute, drag it over there, and see the number of missions. And as always, I always do that, it's consignee description, because I don't know why hard all these codes. Let me drag out again and use consignee description. You see? Text. That for that particular day, we see that Monusco, it's the one that created more. Then we have Somalia. Uh, UN is engaging on server force. I don't know exactly what that one is. Minusma, Minusca some other UN entities as well. So that's the mission, uh, MONUSCO, consignee related, which is the, mo which is the most used for destination location, for example, for that particular date, destination location. Or if, yeah, let's, let's do it first for that particular date. So destination location should be one of the, our attributes. FO destination location, we have several options, the city, the postal code, country, country description, the, look, the description itself, location, house number. So there are plenty of things. I don't know. Uh, so what do you want? Please. Yeah, description. No, the, this is the most generic one, right? That is, FO destination location description, right? Because the other ones are related to the specifics on the city, the postal code, and the country. So let me drag in. So for each of uh, those, uh, let's read the report from left to right. So we have one date, 6th of December. And then for each, for, for that date, we have a list of consignees, right? Yeah. And then if we go another, uh, another step on our right, we see a destination location. So for that particular date, in, that, in, in a particular consignee description, we have several destinations, right? right? 
Uh, so the the number of uh, FO num uh, created will be linked to a destination location for a particular consignee on that date. Okay. So um, let's see that uh, if just if we are going to focus our analysis on the destination location, we may want to at least put our consignee description in the background because a consignee now is not going to be, not going to drive my analysis, but it's going to be the destination location, right? So let me put it in the in the background, and now I see the date that. I know which day is the date, so I can just remove and put it in the background as well. I know it's 6 of December. Okay. Still there, you know, it's still the report takes on account of that. And now if I only have one column and one attribute, then I know exactly that uh, Nagoya, it's Nagoya, Nagoya, it's the FO destination location where related to the largest number of FO documents created. Okay. Uh, then, if uh, let's do that, let's do an analysis for all the dates, not only 6 of December. So how can we do that? So I go directly into the background, which is the date that I had filtered before, which is 6 of December, instead of only have that particular date, I'm going to select everything. So I'm putting on my analysis here, all the dates available in the system, not only one. So once I click in OK, then probably these numbers will change a little bit, right? And now from actually a FO destination location with no description, so this is actually uh, a good finding, uh, then we jump into the second, which is Beirut, right? But then what, what you can do is now it's a, that's a nice finding. So we see, so there is no FO destination location yet, right? You want to do an analysis exactly of which are the FOs related to that those part, that particular situation, right? You go, oh, sorry, right click, and I keep that member. So I keep only those 73 FO number of documents. All right, well, yes, the report looks kind of uh, very simple, but don't worry because we have the possibility of dragging more things here, like for example, the FO document number, which should be FO document here. Right. As you see that FO destination is blank and we know that, so let me put it in the background. So as I always do, I always if you more or less know what you want to look for. Uh, it's much better to do a bit of cleanup and put things in the background, so it's easier to, to read the report. So this is a list of all the documents with without FO destination location description, okay? In case that we want to wonder why or to which consignee description is or which is the shipper or location or who created the DTR or even the FO, right? FO created by, you can always there. I'm not saying that there is something wrong. Maybe it's uh, you know it's had a perfect explanation there, but then we can just link all those FO documents without any destination location to users, right? In your own mission, and see when it was created and whether there is a problem with with those with those FOs or not. So you see, and that, that's actually it was not part of the demo. But as you can see, once you kind of like uh, enter in this uh, let's say uh, report then there are plenty of other doors that are available for you to to check. And uh, then you open, an, you know, the door on your far right, let's say, and then you see a list of 50 other doors. So you are kind of like, you know, going in a, some sort of a maze, right, as until you find what you're looking for. So um, let me go back to the demo. Uh, so that's the first point. Then the second is related to damages, but before I go there, just want to double check with Sol if everything is okay and we have any comments or question. <laughs> we don't have any question because everything is quite clear and I'm going to take up the opportunity to really, Daniel, thank you for these new tricks that you are adding. You are giving a lot of adding, added value to this presentation. In, 
uh, just to comment from my side that I'm really impressed the amount of information that we have here that we can analyze. So my advice, guys, for all of you is to have always the job aid handy with you because for sure whatever you will need to analyze, you can find it here. It's very, very, really useful. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Danny. Over to you. Thank you, So, Okay, so I'm going to uh, resume with the second uh, bullet point, which is uh, how many FOs with, you find with damages in general, right? So if you're asked that question uh, in terms of damages, what I would do is uh, I would go to the uh, report and uh, uh, first of all, I will go to this field and just click damages. So here at least we see in case that we don't know exactly what's what's going on, what we do it's uh we once we click in damages what we see if there are any measure or any attribute related to that. And uh yes, I think Sol just it stepped out and uh, I have here, here Cyril with me. So uh hi Cyril. Um he's gonna help me uh, uh now with the coordinating the Q and A. No problem. Hi, David. And um, Daniel. <laughs> it happens, as you know. <laughs> so, attributes. So, uh, we have number of damages, delays, losses, and other events, uh, number of freight orders with damages, number of freight orders with damages, uh, delays, uh, losses, and other events. In terms of measures, we have three. And then attributes, we don't have any. So, what I would do, it's uh, I would clean up a little bit the report because that was created on, uh, excuse me, I created based on, on a date and a specific uh, uh, situation when there was no destination location in a particular FO. So that's done. We can put that on a site. And either I can drag out things and start from the scratch or I can just go to another sheet and insert a new analysis, okay, in as, as you wish. Uh, Let's click on, on the second sheet. Because it's always nice to keep your initial analysis uh, handy, just in case. Insert a new analysis. And uh, okay, from there I will do the same damages. What we have here. I had those attributes over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and select those three and put them in the columns. Click again on them. So number of freight orders with damages. I'm just, you know, whatever is related to damage, I'm just dragging in just in case. Third one, it's this one. All right. So initially, I see that 28 uh, situ in 28 situations in 28 FOs, you have number of. Uh, damages, delays or losses, number of freight orders with damages, it's a zero, number of freight orders with delays, losses or other events, 16. So we want to uh, just expand a little bit and relate it to our documents. Maybe I would put here the FO number, the FO number document here identify those numbers and link those numbers to uh, different of folks here. And there we are kind of like expanding and identifying those FOs with number of damages, if that is the case. So uh, the first column I'm going to sort it in descending order. So there we can see over there and identify really in a click on I, the first, I don't know, 12, 13 columns are related to FOs with number of damages, delays, or 
or events or not the events, whereas the rest, if I scroll down, nothing. So what I'm going to do it's I'm going to select those elements as I always do. I select the first one, click on Shift, last one, give members. So you see that 17 FO documents have some sort of a situation uh, in terms of damages, delays of other events, 28, and then um, number of freight orders are 16, right? Because in a freight order, we can have more than one number of damage or delays, so or we can have a damage and delay. So uh, the granularity is, is there. It's more on the on the first column rather than in the third, right? That, that that's one single number, 16 different uh, FO numbers. But the situation with those FO numbers may be, uh, let's say, uh, replicated in within one FO. So in one FO can have different situations. So that's that's why the counting in the first column is bigger than the counting in the third one. So uh, you could then identify exactly the shipper carrier and, and see or link it to the type of requirement of transportation, whether we're talking about DTR or or uh, FWO. Uh, for example, we can just start to finalize because uh, we have to move on to other part of the demo. You can we can link it to the DTR type. So. Uh, and oh, as I always do, I drag in the one without description. So let me do it again with the description because I don't know by heart. So we, we would be able to do an analysis on the DTR for you know, you know, obviously it's the one with uh, the largest amount, which is actually 12. As you can see, the subtotals are automatically created, right? That's That's good. Uh, forwarding order for COE uh, three, and then forwarding order for COE troops one. Then you can just uh, you know dig in a little bit if you want to analyze based on the type of transportation or what you're transporting rather than the full documents, and then the, you can do a little bit or, or an analysis in that regard. But it's a bit of damages. I want just to to just select one one concept, which is the. The, the something that may have gone wrong with the freight order and the event. So we have three measures related to damages, delays, or losses. And then if you just select those three and then start dragging in some attributes related to the FO or the DTR, you will, you will be able to have a, a, a better uh, view of what's going on with those, uh, with those uh, FOs. I'm going to go back to the to the demo. So that's related to the second bullet point. Third, uh, specifically, specifically for DTR, uh, which are the above info for each dog category? So I think that basically this is the, the answer to, to that. So for, uh, let's say, for each type of DTR, uh, that's the situation in terms of FOs involved and uh, number of delays, damages, or losses. So that's done. In general, which FO carrier has got the highest freight order with damages, delays, losses, or other events? So now we're going to link those data related to damages, delays, losses, or other events to an FO carrier. Right? So uh, for that, I'm going to select only the first column because the question is related only to the number of damages, delays, losses, or other. So let me select only that one. So I can select by right clicking right on the on the header of the column and keep that member. Only one column will be in our analysis. Then FO document. Now it's not really a, a part of my analysis, or in order to respond to the question, it's not so so important. So let me just drag it to the background, for example. And even DTR document type description. Now it's not relevant, so I can drag it out, and then select the FO carrier, right? It was a FO carrier. Like I know the FO carrier over here, description. I put it now in the picture. 
and now the breakdown of those, uh, let's say, 28 situations, it's, uh, it's done by each of these carriers. So we can identify now that the first two are jet air service with six mm, damages, delays, or losses, or other events. Global logistics, the second one. So this is a little bit of uh, the picture that we can see initially, right? And then if you want to know exactly the number of freight orders involved or each of these particular, let's say, let's say carriers, then we can uh, identify here the FO document and we can just drag it, drag it in again into the rows so the FO document will be visible here and broken down by each of these FO carriers, right? Here we can see even now that this particular FO document had two situations with two items here. Or even, it is even worse, right? A scan global logistics, this one has five. Let's just uh, identify a little bit more this guy. So what I'm doing here, I'm keeping the members. So this is my carrier with five situations. Let me just... Uh, Remove the total, right clicking. Remember, in the attributes, you can right click. Totals, height, totals. And uh, um, it was a subtotal, so I remove the subtotal and then I go to the first one, right click. Totals, height, totals. Because sometimes you have a total and a subtotal, and you have to do, you have you have to remove one of these uh, on, of these uh, totals and subtotals at a time. So you cannot do it in in one shot. So this is a situation five five uh, number of damages delays. We, know, we don't know exactly what's going on. If it is a damage or delay or loss of any other event related to our FO document for this particular carrier, we may want to see to which consignee this uh, FO document belongs. So I am dragging in consignee description to add a little bit. So this is Monusco, excuse me, uh, Minusca. And from there, you can even identify the shipper. Because it may be, uh, see, you see, it's now it's a permanent mission, so I may want to. This permanent mission, the Republic of Korea. So, if I identify the DTR type, probably DTR type description, I will see which is the original request coming from. All right, so it's a forwarding order for COE, contingency owned equipment for that particular mission. Okay, and the shipper description, which is the uh, Republic of Indonesia. So that probably it's a member state uh, and the carrier is scan global logistics. So uh, let's see what we can see in our left panel. Uh, planning in term, FO document. First location. We can link it to the unit as well. So let me put it here, right in the middle. So we have the DTR, the FU, and FO. And that's the first document in terms of, uh, of the FU freight unit. So uh, uh, as you could see, um, uh, you can do the analysis of by drilling down and once you understand and see a specific situation, an issue, then you can just start dragging in and give more, let's say, context to that uh, particular particular finding that you did, right? So initially what we saw, it's, we saw that there were 26, 16, if you recall well, 16 different freight orders with damages, losses, or delays. Then we understood that out of those 16, there was one particular that had, that had five situations, five, uh, let's say, issues. We select that one. We identified that that's a DTR related to a COE with this freight unit. 
with this related to this consignee, which is in the mission in MINUSCA, and uh, it's related to the um, transportation of contingency own equipment from the member state, the Republic of Indonesia. Um, so um, that's uh, as, as per the okay, thank you. As per the the demo on on damages, um, then first analyze FOs that we're going to finalize now the the the, the demo with the last two um, the points. Analyze FOs by execution status and percentage of FOs with uh, I think it is uh, delays, damage or losses. Create a bar chart. Analyze FOs by execution status. So execution status. Again, I can, uh, let's say, remove this analysis or include another tab, which is sheet number three. I will do so, insert an analysis, and I start from scratch. Usually, I start in a blank report if uh, the idea is to answer a particular question in a demo. Uh, because you know, if from a blank, let's say, a report, you can select uh, what you need and uh, you'll see the impact in the report right away, rather than cleaning up and then dragging in new things. So blank report. So let me go back to the question, analyze all of those by execution status and percentage execution. So we have here execution status of the foes and then percentage of FOs with problems. So first, uh, let me go to the measures and see whether uh, it's percentage, right? It was, let me go back, it's percentage of a vote. So I shall see some percentage here. And if you don't see, I would, I would recommend you to basically um, look at the percentage of it is there. Sometimes, you know, if I don't find it, what I do, I put all the measures there. I double click the measures and from there I unselect everything. I think it's easier for, at least for me, it's easier to identify a particular concept by just uh, um, filtering. Sorry guys, but this is going a little bit slow. Let me unselect everything again. And I think that the percentage sign, it's at the bottom of this uh, list of records. So let me go all the way down. Excuse me, Danny. This yes. Is yes, mm -hmm. some calculation. I don't know if it's the, this is the case. I'm not shown here. I'm shown under the main menu under calculations. If you close this window. Okay. If you go to custom calculations, you see the icon in the middle. Yes. Hmm? Open it. Ah, oh, it should be available in the sheet one because some cal some calculations ah, are physically in, exactly. in, in the sheets. Ah, that's I mean there. That's a, that's a good point. Huh? Yes, when you have one calculation so using some of the members in the left panel, it appears here. It appears in the first one, the the, the one defaulted, right? Yes, uh, right. initial prompt. Yes. A very good point. Thank you, Juan. So important. If you have calculations in terms of measures, like a percentage of uh, using these uh, any of these uh, concepts in the measures in the columns, then it will uh, be shown in the first sheet. So I guess that if I click here, Juan, in measures, I shall see the percentage signed here, you see? These are the, these are the calculations one was mentioning before. So, uh, okay, so let me start all over. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to, thank you, Juan, click on Add to Update. Going to the Created By, I uh, remove it. I'm going to remove all these uh, attributes in the background. Okay, and the measures, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the percentage that we were mentioning before. Let 
uh, it takes a little bit of time. Okay, so I select everything, and I'll see the percentage. Taking a little, here we go. It's taking more time than I thought. So here we go. Percentage of freight orders with damages, delays, losses, or other events. That's the, the one we want to look for. Right. So let me go back to the demo and analyze all FOs by execution status and percentage of FOs with DDLs. So we have FO documents. Let's click on our data and at least see the picture. You see that uh, obviously here is 100% if, if, if it affects. So because we have here all the FO documents related. So let me just take it out and only select the execution status. So it should be FOE execution status description. Here we go. I'm going to drag it in. And uh, well, before doing that, let me just drag it out again. You see, uh, in the report, you see here 1.9 percent. What that 1.9 percent will represent? Uh, if you read, this is a report. This is just a, a record, but it will tell you that 1.9 percent of all the freight orders at least have uh, some sort of issue with damage, delays, losses, or other events. So this is the picture from 40,000 40, feet, let's say, right? Then we're going to scroll, we're going to go down, so we're zooming in, and by zooming in, by execution, execution status, what we will do is we will break down that percentage by the execution status of each of the FOs. So, let me go and do again the execution status description in the rows. So now that percentage will be different. Why? Because uh, depending on the FOs executed in execution, not ready for transport, not started, or ready for transportation, that will uh, be a little bit of the breakdown of the FOs regarding the execution status with issues in delays, losses, or damages. Uh, over to you, uh, uh, Sidney. I have a question on, um, on uh, the slight delay and major delay. I think Mijana, I think you're asking which figure differentiate the slight delay from major delay. What um, Daniel is trying to explain here, the, the measures are really important because they are business fact, right? So when you have, you do the report and then you see the percentage of delays, the figures, you can from those figures determine what is high and what is less. If in your entity you have, for example, established a KPI of, uh, let's say, 50%, like above 50% delay, maybe it's a major delay, right? Exactly. So when you will see the percentage, all the delay that are above 50, I think you will be considered as a major delay. And then below, slight delay. So in fact, the reports, the bis those business facts allow you to determine what is major and what is slight, depending on the defined target that you have. And I, I believe this is what yeah, Daniel is showing. Exactly, yes, uh, uh, so Cyril was saying basically that, that it, that's the, the business, right, identifying those, let's say, tags, and the business is saying basically it's major when the, the difference between actual and expected dates exceeds four weeks, and if that delay is between two and four weeks, then it will be a slight delay. Okay, but that's, uh, again, uh, a good thing to, to put on, on, that we put on the, the, on the screen that you obeyed, so all those questions related a little bit with the business, uh, are uh, answered as well at some point in the job aid, right? So uh, thank you, thank you for the question and, and Cyril <laughs> for the answer. So uh, uh, getting back to the demo, the execution status is broken down in terms of freight orders with damages, delays, or losses. This is the, the breakdown of the percentage. Um, let me put another type of uh, of uh, measure. Yes, because I want to show you one thing. Um, see, I can see that. 
demo with a bar chart. Okay. I'm going to let's let's create a bar chart. Okay, so we have this. We have execution status and percentage percentage of uh, documents, freight orders with damages. So I'm going to insert here a pie chart. Insert and then you click on the icon. Automatically, you'll see that the breakdown it's uh, it's uh, very it's clearer in in the sub analysis in the pie chart. You'll see that most of the uh, situations are in the foes with the execution the status not ready for transportation execution, right? It makes sense. And the other uh, four different statuses are uh, less than, let's say, 20% uh, in general. But what happens if I include, let me close this analysis, what happens if I include another percentage, for example, and let me double click in the picture. Where were in the button? Number of orders with a slight delay and major delay answering to your question, Regina. So let me close the freight orders in general. So it's slight delay and major delay. So please take an account that I selected only two measures, these two. Okay. And I have the breakdown will be done by execution status. Here we go. So the number of uh, freight orders with a slight delay is 4.5%, major delay 37.8 in general. And the breakdown by execution status is this one, in case that we are that we want to point out this or to link it this percentage to the execution status. But my point here is what happens if I now include insert a pie chart? The system is going to retrieve uh, instead of one, two pie charts. So here the uh, golden rule or the rule of thumb, as you wish, is in terms of pie charts or bar charts or line charts, any visualization of data in BI will be linked or will be directly proportional to the number of measures present in your report. So let me put it in another way. If you see two columns, you will see two pie charts. If you see one column, you will see one pie chart. So the uh, data visualization is linked to the attribute and one of the columns, right? So if I here include another extra percentage, for example, the major delays, no major, the total number of delays, uh, percentage of orders with damages delays, or even all the percentages over here, all the percentages. I will see instead of two, I will see here more pie charts. Initially, uh, the system gives you two, but you see this uh, slider on the upper panel. If I scroll to my right, I'll see that the, the data will change. Let me see. Okay, so I will see in this case four pie charts. And why only see four? Because the, here the percentage of freight orders with losses is zero percent. So there is no information related to freight orders with losses. So what what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, remove, and I will see only four columns related to percentages and four pie charts. And again, the slider has to be active all the way to your right. And this takes a little bit of time, so don't worry. Should change some point. Oh, in any case, uh, as we said, the rule of thumb, four columns, four pie charts, five columns, five pie charts. So and that, that's something that usually happens to uh, non-familiarized uh, users. Sometimes when they create visualization data in, in BI, they tend to create these sub-analyses uh, when they, the reports are uh, with plenty of information and plenty of columns. And then when they see like uh, 15 different pie charts or 15 different columns all shrinked over here, shrunk into 
one single slider and uh, a small square, they think that they did something wrong, right? And it's not a matter of doing something right or wrong, it's just the number of measures represented in your initial analysis over here will define the number of column, the number of uh, bar charts or pie charts that you create. Okay, that's, that's important. I wanted to take a little bit of time on that because uh, we did uh, experience in the, especially in the reporting academy, some of these uh, questions. So in case that you, that you wonder why, that's, that's the answer to the question. So uh, then uh, the last point, which mission has the highest FO status executed and ready for transportation execution? Okay, so uh, for doing that, I'm going to remove the pie charts because uh, trust me, when you start to drag and drop things and you have pie charts involved or bar charts, then it takes more time. So first of all, to answer the questions, I only have to select two statuses, which is ready for execution, if I'm not, uh, excuse me, executed and ready for transportation execution. So how can, how can I do that? As always, filter it. I can filter here in the rows. I say, and select everything. Execute it and ready. It's too bad. So it will have only two rows. And obviously, uh, in, tef in terms of measures, this percentage is it's okay, might give you a little bit of information, but the question is more related to the mission with the FO numbers. So instead of percentage, I may want to put here counts of FOs. So let me as well and select everything and select and that takes a little bit of time what i see so bear with me some more seconds i unselect everything and i select only number of fo documents right so around FO number of documents is over here. So let me click all this. I will see only one column with the number of FO documents with the status of execution ready for transportation or executed. So that's a breakdown. So <clears throat> if we want to do an analysis of that particular execution status, those two particular execution statuses, by consigning me, as I always do, I know exactly what I have here on my on my report. So let me put this in the background and now put in my report my FO consignee. The consignee should be here, description. I put it in the rows and that the breakdown now it's by consignee taking on account in the, bank, in the background the two statuses that we filtered, that we had filtered before. You see, if I put my uh, mouse or here, the click on top of this attribute, you see that I filter by two members. Let me, I don't know if you're sure. You see two members executed and ready for transportation execution. So even when you just hover over the uh, execution status attribute, you can see which is the filter that you have done. So that's the consignee breakdown by all the and the number of FOs. And even it's already, you see, sorted in the standing order. So we see ONSOS, Mali, Congo, three with execution status uh, ready for transportation execution or executed. Okay. So that's the last uh, question. Obviously, from here you can do much more analysis, but I just just wanted to to use and uh, take advantage of this question to show to you a little bit of uh, the background and how you can filter uh, initially. So uh, that's us for the demo uh, on the freight order event. You see that uh, it's quite interesting this one, especially if we want to. Uh, let me just show it again. Uh, the plenty of uh, possibilities that we can uh, have or it's, they are at hand, very handy. Uh, all over 100 columns, all, all over 100 uh, measures available for us to be used. So quite interesting. And then I'm, we're going to uh, move on to the last part, 
um, which is the TM Power BI. Uh, although this is not part of the training itself, but uh, we wanted to take advantage of at least 10 minutes of your time to show to you the structure that uh, our colleagues in RDM created. This is just, again, a suggestion, a recommendation to start using Power BI. This is a fixed already view but uh, quite consistent and uh, complete in a way. But definitely, as uh, some of the Power BI trainings are on board, that have been um, uh, carried out by our colleagues in RDM all over the places, so uh, you will be able to create, or at least someone in your mission or your unit will be able to create something that uh, uh, fits your needs or customized to your needs in terms of Power BI. So let me just... Uh, Click on the link on Power BI and is uh, let me use this. I'm going to copy and paste in Chrome. This usually in Chrome works much better. So just drag it to the screen. I yeah, I'm just copying the URL. This is the, once you copy and paste in, in Chrome, this is what you initially will see. The dashboard is there available for you automatically. So uh, you see in the left panel the different options that uh, you have once you click on the, on the arrow in terms of movements, troops, STR, STOs, UNOE, events and delays. I think for STR, STOs there we have no data so far, but because it is work in progress. But initially what you see, it's a map with all the ongoing movements across the board, right? Uh, but then you can actually uh, drill down or focus your analysis on the troops movement or UNOE, for example. So let's click on UNOE. So once you click on each of these icons, then you will be redirected to a particular dashboard devoted only for those movements for, in this case, UNOE, right? So it's UNOE, UN-owned equipment, movements by Incoterm, by Boots Vendor, by PAD, very interesting, difference between estimated and actual cost by each of the freight orders, modal transportation, life cycle status movements, right? So, uh, and, and then as you can see, uh, as you probably know in Power BI, or in case that you don't know, once you're clicking one of these data visualizations, in this case, I, in the download chart, I clicked here for this particular uh, status description, which is in planning. Once you click there, the rest of the visualizations will be filtered by those. So, for example, these life status movements, which are uh, in planning, then the freight orders, here in this table will be filtered based on those status. Whereas if I click on plant, you see, the whole visualization, not only the table, but the rest of the bar charts will be updated accordingly. So uh, of course you have here a slider in terms of movement and data range. You can change the data range so the data will uh, be affected accordingly. So uh, it works for every single type of, uh, let's say, uh, concept in terms of TM for events. That's a very nice one where you can see the ongoing movements and the events for each of the transport uh, of the freight orders. Um, uh, but uh, as, we, as I said previously, uh, this is just a suggestion that uh, actually is quite nice and you know, gives you a pretty good idea of your movements, events, and uh, transportation in your in your mission, uh, especially if you're dealing with uh, with the freight orders, you have uh, plenty of information related and specifics on, on each one of them. Uh, the filtering and the um, let's say uh, drilling down, it's quite uh, user friendly with these uh, let's say sliders on the left in terms of time with this. Uh, drop-down lists in terms of transportation mode, for example, execution status. So, uh, but please bear in mind that all this data that it's visually, uh, it's shown in Power BI, it's coming from BI. So all the reports that we saw before, uh, this, this report,
report, for example, the trade orders and and, uh, and events. Uh, this report, it's uh, pulling the data from the transactional system, as we saw the very first day. In the behind the scenes, uh, the data, it's exported into Excel, and that Excel then it's linked to Power BI, and Power BI will be shown those data. Okay? So um, uh, this is just a, a tool that you can use to complement the uh, trends and analysis that you can do in, in Umoja BI. Okay? So uh, Power BI is not intended to, um, let's say, um, cover any uh, space that it's not covering Umoja BI, but it's intended to complement the analysis that you do in the reports that we saw these, these four days. Um, and the data that you can find in Power BI is the same the data that you can find in the reports, because the, as I said, the reports are uh, being fed in terms of data from the transactional system, and uh, that data in the transactional system, once it reaches BI, goes to Power BI. Right? I'm, I mean, I'm not an expert in Power BI, but uh, our colleagues in RDM which are online can tell you much better than myself how how it works technically in case you have any question but uh, uh that's uh, that's the view that you can uh, foresee uh, and uh, the good thing about power bi is you do not have to have a specific level of access once you um there is a view available with no uh, restrictions whatsoever uh you can link on the link and then the the app the Microsoft app will be um, opened, and then you will be able to see uh, and navigate through this uh, dashboard. A uh, good thing that you cannot change anything, so basically it's a visualization purpose. You click here and there, nothing is changed in in the background, nothing is changed in the transactional system, so this is just a reflection of what's going on in, in terms of transportation, but you're not changing anything in terms of tra transaction while you're using BI or Power BI. Uh, I don't know, Juan or Daniel, if you have any, uh, Daniel Sanchez uh, in RDM, if you have any, any comments or any other uh, uh, thing that you want to highlight in terms of Power BI, because you guys are the masterminds behind all this uh, dashboard. So over hello. to you. Uh, hello, Dani. Yeah, we have, in fact, one question uh, asking about the, how it's connected to, to DM. And the Power BI currently is, is uh, showing uh, data from Umoja BI uh, with a periodicity of one hour, uh, scheduling files, but there is a plan to have direct connection with live data in a few weeks, so we expect to have it by this month. So hopefully soon you will be able to connect directly to, to BI from, from Power BI and with, with no scheduling, so you will see real-time data. Yes, thank you, Ron and Daniel. Um, one of the most important things, and then this is one of the objectives you want to achieve, you know, uh, by providing this training, is to show the capability and the usability of uh, Umoja BI. So the dashboard is, is very good um, as well, but as Daniel explained, it's a standard dashboard. It gives you always the same measure and then the same fact. Like, while in Power BI, what it just showed uh, before, yes, figure work. You will have, you know, all your dimensions, you know, the attributes. Go back where you were there. And then you also have your business fact. So it gives you, depending of what you wanted, you are trying to, to find out, it gives you a lot of flexibility. Right? So it's really, it's really, I really encourage you to uh, understand how Umoja BI itself works so you can have more details. And then the dashboard in Power BI will be good because you can have, in a nutshell, and, and good overview. Right, so for your operations and so forth, you know, make sure that you go to Power BI, uh, to Emoja BI and maybe overview and, and performance, how well you're doing uh, uh, Power BI. Yeah, thank you, uh, Sil. Yes, uh, as we said before, uh, these, these are complementary tools to be used for one purpose and another, right? Uh, the good thing about the reports uh, that RDM created as well in BI is that uh, the more you know how it works and how to use these reports and how to use the different functionalities that you have on at hand, 
it's the more that you can customize based on your needs. So you see a specific trend or something that doesn't make sense in your own, let's say, uh, data for transportation management, you can really uh, understand what's going on if you, if you start to use uh, these analysis workspaces. Whereas uh, if you use Power BI, it's more intended to show, let's say, trends as a whole in, in, your, in your mission and to for presentation purposes rather than doing a specific analysis, right? So the tools are available for you. The tools are uh, being meant to be used. So, uh, and then we are happy that, you know, both of them coexist together, but uh, they have different uh, purposes and mandates, right? And, um, and that's why we wanted to at least, you know, show to you what's avail available in terms of, uh, of Power BI for transportation management. And we thank our colleagues in RDM for, for uh, giving access to, to us and, and show to us how it works. Uh, so, that's, uh, that in terms of the day three, uh, that's uh, what I wanted to show to you. In case that uh, we don't have any question or comment, feel, please feel, feel free to do so. We have still 15, 20 minutes to, to, to go, and I just wanted to uh, go through a bit of a wrap up of uh, what we have seen these three days. Um, starting with the uh, with the overview that uh, that we saw on the very first day on on Tuesday, uh, I'm just highlighting facts that uh, I want you to at least uh, have as a takeaway. Uh, if you have to transfer the information to another colleague, the minute that you leave this training, first takeaway is just uh, for BI reporting, the transportation management reports are basically are reflecting transactional data. So there is no 24 hour delay from the TM transactional module to Moja BI. That's one of the first takeaways that I want you guys to have. Second one, that if you want to start using these reports, you will have to request the BI 85 role, which will give you access to four different type of reports. First one, the delivery requirements and forwarding orders then to end freight orders, items, and charges, the big one that we saw the very first day, event details, and then the report that we saw, we just uh, went through and did a demo, the freight order at events, okay? And the, this is the code that you have to request if you don't have it already. Third, that uh, available so far in terms of BI TM, it's those four reports that I'm, uh, I just showed to you, and then the visualization and dashboard that we just went through. More to come in terms of more analysis workspaces and uh, web intelligence reports, yes, but that will depend on the usage and the requirements from the business. And of course, you guys, uh, as uh, eventually, uh, eventual, let's say, end users of the system. Fourth, that there is a KPI reports mapping in place uh, that is not uh, formal, meaning that it's not coming from the business itself. This is a su suggestion that we're uh, conveying for you to start using the different reports as a starting point, right? Starting to use your analysis uh, workspaces uh, by just filtering with the report name and you know identifying which are the fields and attributes that are meant to be fitting that specifically KPI. But again, those KPIs and those mapping are not coming from the business itself, are not trying to fit any specific official KPI as we, as we do have in property management, for example, nothing to do with that, but at least help you guys and us as trainers to start using the, the rewards. Then uh, those are the first, the, the first five takeaways as a whole. Then remember that we went through the end to end on freight orders and, and analysis. This is the first and you know the biggest analysis workspace in terms of let's say logical sequence. As you can see, the prompt goes from the DTR going through the FU and finalizing in the FO, right? In, log in a logical way, the prompt, you know, it's asking you from where do you want to start your analysis, right? Uh, remember that uh, you have plenty of uh, possibilities in this report to start using DTR, FUs, FOs, but those uh, re those um, uh, records are in the measures as well. So you have 
numbers and specifics on DTR of number of documents, number of consignee and shippers. Um, then uh, FU and FO as well. And uh, event management uh, at the We'll go back to that later, okay? And the measures are there in place. So the end-to-end -end, uh, report, it's really giving you an holistic perspective of your transportation management. Second uh, report was the delivery requirements and FOs. Uh, remember that we had two tabs there, summary and, and details. Um, basically, uh, it's uh, giving you the whole uh, information from the starting point on the, the, the DTRs or FWOs and link them to the FOs created. Remember that there is a one-to-many relationship between the DTR and the FOs and a one-to-one -one relationship between the delivery requirement and the freight unit. Uh, third, the event details. Remember how we went through this report, very important to identify the different events uh, created and the sequence of those events for the FOs. Remember that the first from the event sequence of event 385 to 900 were more or less expected events that you can analyze in terms of the measures were related to the difference between planned and actual submission of documents and stuff like that. But then in terms of sequence from 1,000 to 9,000, we, we could actually filter those sequence of events because those events are tagged as unexpected related to delays, uh, to losses. Um, so uh, we did remember we filtered through those uh, type of events and then we analyzed what was going on in terms of the carrier and the shipper. So the event details uh, report really is giving you a very uh, good perspective on from A to Z on the number of events related for each of the FOs. Last but not least, the, the report that we uh, saw just now, uh, freight order and event, very important this one, right? Very important that we have plenty of measures to take on account and do your analysis. Thank you, Juan, because you remind me now that uh, especially for the calculations, please rely, those, those calculations will be in the first sheet. Uh, if you create new, create new analysis in another, in another two or three sheets, those, those calculations will not be there. So just uh, um, as uh, uh, I wanted to underline that fact. Um, then we went a little bit on from the Power BI uh, dashboard created by RDM and uh, that, uh, that so you can understand the difference between this tool and, and, and the different reports that we saw. So uh, uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed the training, you, uh, you know, at least uh, retrieved those five, six different takeaways that I was mentioning, at least in this wrap-up presentation. Uh, remember that uh, uh, this session will be re it's been recorded and will be avail make uh, will be made available for you in our playlist in YouTube, along with the other two days. And the presentations and the demos will be sent to you right after the the session today. Uh, so I want to thank. Uh, Cyril for being present so all uh, with, uh, who had to, to step out a little bit for another project so uh, thank you very much and of course RDM Juan uh, Pablo Daniel Sanchez uh, thank you you know it was a you know a collaboration effort bef be between the both teams so if you want to know not about TM but about reporting in general please know that we do deliver reporting academies and we have plenty of material related to BI and uh, I have mm, nothing to say, but thank you to all of you. And uh, I hope to see you again in the uh, near future. Thank you.